Regarding quality two, what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth is of itself, a thing apart and admits no variations or modifications, look like in my personal life? Well, there's quite a lot of ways I feel it would affect our personal life if we really believed this particular quality and understood it in our heart. Mm -hmm. And the key is understanding it in our heart, not understanding it in our head. But if we understood it in, in our feelings, we wouldn't firstly try to negotiate with God about truth. Mm. Like we would understand that God's truths are fixed. It doesn't matter how long in the past, how long in the future, they're still going to be fixed. There's nothing we can do to change them. We, either have, we only have a choice. The choice is discover it or don't discover it. Yeah. That's our choice. Yeah. We don't have a third choice, and that is change it. <laughs> we don't have that choice. Yeah. And, um, and I feel quite frequently mankind wants to have the third choice, of course. We want to change what universally happens rather than actually discover what universally happens and why. Mm. And I can see that on a like a macro level and a micro level. Certainly. In that, yeah. you know, a lot of us want to be able, or globally really there's a consensus that we would like to be able to keep taking from the earth all of its natural resources and polluting it and feel that the earth's going to be, be okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and God's truth is, nope. no, you're creating damage. And there's consequences. And, there's going to be consequences. and you can't avoid that. No. Even even if there is a consensus on the planet about something, if God's truth is different from that, exactly, the, then we're that's going to create the mess. Yes. Because you can't avoid it. Yeah. yeah. God's laws are attempting to correct. Yeah. That perspective. Yeah. Mm. And on a on a like on a micro level, if you like, in one person's private life, mm -hmm. I see how a lot of us there might be something from our past that happened that we haven't dealt with. Mm -hmm. We harmed someone, uh, we did something that we even know mm. it was not morally right. Mm. And yet a lot of us try to make excuses for ourselves, put off dealing with that for like years and years and decades. Mm. Um, but God's truth is that it did happen mm -hmm. and we can't change that. And there's only a few ways we can make it go away. And, and even those engage different laws of God as well. Yes. <laughs> so, so you can't make it go away just by hoping it will go away. Yeah. That doesn't work because everyone who tries that, it never works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, these are all parts of understanding that, this, that God's truth is immovable. You, you either conform to it or you understand it or you don't discover it or don't conform to it. That's your choice. But at the end of the day, if you don't conform to it or you don't discover it through ignorance, then there'll be less happiness in your life. And if you conform to it or discover it because you want to, there'll be more happiness in your life. And that, that is a fixed and immovable result yeah. of God's truth being fixed and immovable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, some other things you've listed here. When we have a soul-based understanding of this truth, we don't complain that God's laws feel harsh and uncompromising. Yes. Uh, see, what, what I suppose what a lot of people on earth believe is that if, if, a, if a law is fixed and immovable, then it means there's no compassion. Yes. They believe this. And, and the reason why is most people on earth want to negotiate with law. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, they might be driving and speeding and the law of the land is, you know, 110 kilometres an hour, you know, along this freeway or highway is the extent of your speed limit and you do 130 and then you get picked up by a person who's trying to enforce the law and you try to negotiate with him. Oh, you know, I was in a hurry, I was this or that or whatever. And then you go to court and you try to negotiate with them and, you know, and, and we don't understand in that place that while we might be able to negotiate ourselves out of the results of mankind's law, mm -hmm. we will never be able to negotiate ourselves out of the results of God's law. And that's a loving thing, actually. And the reason why it's a loving thing, it means that the law is applied consistently to every person without consideration of their background, of their marital status, of their sexual uh, orientation, of their cultural background, of their uh, gender background, or any other thing. Mm -hmm. It is fi fixed and applied consistently every time yeah. whether you agree with it or not it's <laughs> going to be fixed and applied constantly at every time and and that that's 
God has done that in order to show us how to love, to teach us about love. Yes, to teach us about love in a lot of ways, in, in the sense that love would, would never want me to have a different result to you. Mm -hmm. Love wouldn't, you know, love two people in a different way. If you truly love, you don't feel like one person is more important than the other or less important than the other. You honour that both are equal in God's eyes and need to be equal in your own. These are qualities that, that are exposed through these laws that are unable to be modified. And, and so this is a very important thing to understand, the in importance of the fact that God has provided consistent truth, mm -hmm. consistent laws. God is a consistent parent, mm -hmm. not a parent who modifies things based on personal opinion or personal feelings. And God's personal feelings are consistent, mm -hmm. unlike most persons personal feelings on earth and particularly unlike most parents on earth yeah. feelings yeah. towards their children. God's laws, structure, truth is always consistent. Mm -hmm. yep. And I suppose that's what you're really saying about having a soul-based understanding of each of these qualities, aren't you? Mm. That when we have a soul-based understanding of them, we, we recognise the function and the love within each of these truths. And also we put that into our personal practice in our day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when we interact with other people, we don't make agreements with them that we try to renege from mm -hmm. or that we try to get out of. If we've made an agreement with a person and the agreement ha has been formulated and firmed up, then, then even if it's painful for you to follow through with it, then because you need to honour this consistent part of God's law, you would want to follow through with it. And the only time you wouldn't be able to is if it was physically impossible for you. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you wouldn't try to negotiate your way out of it. You wouldn't try to go to court and to get out of it. You would want to do it and you'd only not do it when it's physically impossible yeah. to do it, to not yeah. do it. And, uh, or when perhaps the other person was lenient and decided, well, I can give you a break, you know. Yeah. You would only do it under those circumstances when love was present. And you'd realise this is a factor of love as well as truth. So there are lots of ways that this particular quality, quality number two, would affect you in your day-to-day -day life. All right, just two final things then to clarify, to ask you. You've yeah. written two statements here and I would like to ask you how they relate to this quality. Sure. So you're saying when we have a soul-based understanding that divine truth admits no variations or modifications, then we feel that when we're in pain, it's because of our own emotional error. Mm -hmm. And we feel that God's universe is loving and pain is the result of disharmony with that loving truth. Mm. So um, do you want to expand on that in any way? Certainly. I think it's fairly self-explanatory, yeah. but... but because God's laws are fixed and God's truths are fixed, it makes sense that every single truth or every single law is going to have this quality that when we break it, it's going to have one kind of effect and when we live in harmony with it, it's going to have another kind of effect. So when we break it, it's going to have an effect that is painful mm -hmm. and when we live in harmony with it, it's going to have an effect that is pleasurable. And that applies to other people who break it around us as well. So if you break a law that affects me, I'm going to also feel some pain as well as you. And this should help you understand the importance of change and not wanting to break the law because mm -hmm. it's affecting me as well as yourself. Okay. Now, if I was truly understanding that God's laws are fixed and immovable, I wouldn't be trying to always get away with breaking the law and breaking the truth. I would want to discover it. Mm -hmm. I would want to know it. I wouldn't be trying to avoid it through ignorance because I know that ignorance is dangerous. And if you think about uh, life here on earth, many people think ignorance is bliss. But the reality is in God's universe, ignorance is dangerous. Mm. Like if you don't know that, uh, and, and this is why children are often placed in danger, right? Because they don't know their ignorance causes them to not know things. And, and as a parent, it's our, our import, important that we instruct them about certain things. So, so they climb up on top of the roof and try to jump off. They don't know the first time they try to do that, if they ever attempt it, that, that, that's pretty dangerous. Like <laughs> yeah. there's a chance that you're going to hit the ground at some speed and potentially break bits or even die, right? That's the danger. Now, 
the first time they do that, or even if they do that in a macro, you know, in this small level, uh, just fall off a step. They realise, wow, you fall down, it's dangerous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they get that feeling. Because God's laws are consistent about it. We know that feeling is going to be present. And as a child, they then learn through this experience that every time they are ignorant of a law, it creates more danger mm. in their life, not less. Mm. And this is what we need to understand as adults. Every time we are ignorant of God's truth and we choose to be ignorant of God's truth, God's truth doesn't know any modification. It's still going to operate the same way as it always has. Yeah. And that means that if we're ignorant of it and, and purposely trying to be ignorant of it in particular, then, then we are going to find ourselves at, with quite a lot of pain and suffering in our lives because we're choosing to live in a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to know God's laws, they will feel really beautiful and you understand them and there is no danger. So because God's law knows no modifications and is consistent always, there is, once you discover them, there is this beauty that results yeah. in your life, safety that results in your life. Like most people on this pres on the, presently on the earth are so afraid of a lack of safety. Well, if you want to be safe, know all of God's laws. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Find be out as many of them you can. <laughs> <laughs> because, because they're so loving, they actually ensure our safety when we comply. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so we, we start to see them. We start to see God's truths. And remember, laws are just God's truths. Yeah. Like the law of gravity is just the truth about gravity. Yeah. The law of aerodynamics is just the truth about aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. So if we look at spiritual laws, the law of attraction is just the truth about how our soul attracts things. Yeah. And the law of cause and effect is the truth about the relationship between something that happens and the fact that it had a cause. You know, there's all these laws that we have that are all just really truths. Mm. That's all they are. They're a framework within, uh, that our soul can exist within. Now, we can choose to ignore them all if we want, but they don't know any modification. They're going to operate whether we choose to ignore them or we choose to discover them. Yeah. Now, it would be better to discover them than it would be to ignore them <laughs> <laughs> from a personal perspective yeah. and, and also from a global perspective. And this is why I feel it's such an important quality to understand. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank mm. you. Okay.